We're uh, keeping an eye on shares of U.S. Steel, up a bit today, but down nearly 17 percent since President Biden weighed in on Nippon Steel's deal to buy the uh, company for 55 bucks a share in cash. President saying it's vital that U.S. Steel remain domestically owned and operated. Competitor Cleveland Cliffs, for its part, has said it would consider a bid for U.S. Steel's assets, or certainly some of them, if that deal with Nippon Steel were to fall by the wayside. Joining us now on the CNBC exclusive is Cleveland Cliffs CEO Lorenzo Consalves. Lorenzo, good to uh, have you. You've been a one-man wrecking crew uh, in terms of kind of bringing the heat on this deal, especially given your relationship with the union versus Nippon Steel's. Why has it been so uh, important to you to try to prevent this deal from actually happening? Yeah, yeah actually, good morning, Dave. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Uh, uh, actually, my position all along was very constructive. My offer was uh, done in a way uh, that was prepared to uh, make things to go through smoothly. And that's why I started uh, with uh, the union, the USW. The USW has contractual rights, and I respect that. And that was one thing that it was still did not respect. And that's when the problems started. So yeah, at this point, it's just a matter of waiting. Uh, it's not if. Is, uh, yeah, what do when? you mean when you say that? It's not if, it's when. You, you don't believe there's any possibility that Nippon is going to be able to work a deal with the unions uh, in its favor to, to be able to close its transaction? I have full conviction that this deal between Nippon Steel and the, and the union will never happen. Uh, we have a, an agreement with the USW. Uh, we have the right to bid on their behalf. We understand the successorship clause. That's something that clearly Nippon Steel has no clue about. And uh, we are going to prevail. The president of the United States has already uh, spoken. At this point, it's no longer uh, all the government will approve, the government will not approve. The government has already uh, expressed their, their decision in terms of uh, who should keep ownership of the assets. And it's not a company from Japan. And Japan is not a friend. Japan in trade. Well, J J Japan would see that pretty differently, Lorenzo, in terms of saying they're not a friend. I mean, it, it, it seems hard for some people to imagine that it could really be found to be a national security risk from a CFIUS review. And so how do you think this deal is going to fall apart then? Uh, obviously, the president has indicated he wants the U.S. deal to be a domestically owned, but it's got to be through the CFIUS process, doesn't it? How are they found to be a national security threat? Uh, CFIUS will do their work, and CFIUS will generate a report that will land on the desk of the President of the United States. And th then the President can accept, uh, reject, or modify the report. So basically, the President can do whatever the President wants to do. And uh, first, uh, uh, Director Brainerd of the National Economic Council expressed the opinion of the government, and the Japanese did not understand. Then the President of the United States himself he spoke loud and clear. And apparently, uh, Nippon Steel, that started with an embarrassment with M&A, wants to transform this thing in a diplomatic problem between the United States and Japan. So if that's the case, let's, let's do it. Let's play. Uh, well, what influence have you had then on the Biden administration? Obviously, Dave McCall runs the uh, United Steel Workers Union. Uh, we had him on yesterday. Uh, he clearly seems to have, have a, a strong influence on, uh, on the president. Have you been behind that as well? We have a, a, a very, very strong partnership with the USW. It's unusual. It's not common. And it's a new thing that I believe it's about time for investors to take notice. We can work with organized labor in a constructive way. We don't need to be fighting. We need to be working together. That's what middle class is about. That's what union jobs, good paying union middle class jobs are about. And the president of the United States is fully committed with this type of agenda. So yeah. that's what that's what we have. Um, you know, but I, there's there are those who believe this has simply been your attempt to try to get Nippon Steel to agree to sell you the blast furnaces, take Big River, give you the assets you want, that you really you've waged this campaign largely to get them to the negotiating table, but they haven't been willing to do that. And then you've pulled the lever in terms of politically to try to get the Biden administration to come against the deal. Is that a, is that a, a fair perception? It's not. 
It's not. It was the perception until the president of the United States, President Biden, is, uh, spoke loud and clear that the ownership of the assets should stay with the United States. I would be able to do that until uh, uh, they, they, meaning the, the Japanese, provoked the U.S. government to react the way uh, the president reacted. So at this point, I, different from the Japanese, I pay attention when the president of the United States speaks. So at this point, there's no more uh, negotiated deal between Cleveland Cliffs and Nippon Steel. Nippon Steel is out, and uh, even the shareholders vote will not do any good. It's like well, having they don't the think they're theory. out, Lorenzo. You know that. They think they still have a deal in place. They have a contract. They're probably going to get a positive shareholder vote in April. You seem to be saying something very different than what they would say, which is we still should be able to negotiate a deal with the unions, and why wouldn't the unions want to in some way versus just being left at U.S. Steel with no, no, you know, no other company owning it? The problem is that the Titanic has already uh, hit the iceberg. So at this point... There's no point in, in, in pretending that the ship is already is still sailing. The ship is sinking. It's sinking slowly, and uh, we are very patient. We are not going anywhere. We're going to wait until the deal is unraveled, and we'll pick up the pieces at the other side. What does that As, mean, picking yeah. up the pieces on the other side? Yeah, because uh, U.S. still has an ongoing concern, no future, uh, because of the way they disrespected the, the U.S. dog. The way they treated the union as a, a third-class citizens, uh, there's no situation that Nippon Steel doesn't buy, but Nippon Steel is not going to buy. And the U.S. Steel continues as, uh, as an ongoing concern. So someone is going to be at the other side, and I be you bet I will be there, and I will be able to... Well, you were, there, you were there during the process as well. You bid $54 a share in cash and stock, obviously not far from what was the winning bid. But one of the concerns, Lorenzo, was the antitrust concern, the fact that the combined company, Cliffs and U.S. Steel, would have 95% of iron ore production in the U.S., 100% of blast furnace production, uh, among other antitrust issues. How do you get people comfortable with the antitrust risk that clearly made U.S. Steel uncomfortable. Yeah, U.S. Steel uh, got these excuses in order to be able to alienate the union. That's what happened. Uh, at the end of the day, automotive is competitive with mini mills, is competitive with electric furnaces. U uh, United States Steel themselves built Big River to produce automotive, to compete against us. Nucor is building a plant in West Virginia to produce automotive. Steel Dynamics just built a plant in Sinton, Texas, to produce automotive. And we have to compete against imports, and we have to compete against other materials like aluminum. So we will handle that uh, when the time is right with the DOJ, and we have a plan, and these things are easily resolved uh, when you, you know what you are doing. Would you be uh, willing to give shareholders hell or high water protection, you know, against the antitrust risk? I'm not going to negotiate with you, Dave. But uh, I know what it takes to get the deal done, and we're going to get the deal done. You're going to get the deal done. Again, yes. to come back to it, right now they have a contract to get bought for 55 bucks a share in cash. And even though the president has said what he has said, nothing's changing that. I mean, uh, I just, I guess I just, my, you know, come back to this question of what gives you the confidence that this deal is a fail? At the very least, the clock is unforgiving. And uh, coming June of 2025, and uh, there's no deal, the deal expires. Um, another thing that can happen, if uh, instead of having President Biden, we have President Trump, he gave me personal assurance that he will, uh, he will block the deal at the very beginning, if not on day one, for sure, at the very beginning of his tenure. President so Trump, we, former President Trump told you he would block any deal as well? Yes. He said that to you? Have you he spoken to President Biden? Has he given you the same assurance? I have not, but my, my partner, uh, Dave McCall, is in direct contact with the White House, and uh, we, we have assurance from the Biden administration as well.